In cardio golf, I use a short practice club and the cardio golf slope. The short practice club is short for a couple of reasons. It's short so that you can swing the club inside without hitting the ceilings or the walls. Not everyone has these high ceilings, so this is great for indoor practice. The other thing that's great about this club is that the club face is closer to the hands, to the handle, so when you get to impact, you can actually see the club face. So you can check to make sure your club face is square if you do it in slow motion. You can see if I swing through like this, that club face is open. If I turn my hands too quickly like that, the club face is square. So you can practice getting that square club face at impact. So important. The cardio golf slope is a regular step to do exercise and aerobics on, but it has a golf twist. It's sloped like a fairway. You can see it's curved. So now we can practice those uphill and those downhill lies that are hard to practice because most of the time you only get those lies on the golf course. The driving ranges are usually flat, so there's nowhere to rehearse those lies. So now you have some place to do it. If you're not sure how to play an uphill or downhill lie, go to cardiogolf.com and just type in the search bar uphill, downhill lie, and a bunch of video tips will come up to show you how to play those different shots. So the first exercise I want to show you is just something to get your heart rate going to help you warm up. So just hold the cardio golf club like this. I call this the shorty club. It's short so that you can swing inside, a little play on words. And then from here, you're just going to step up and down like this. So what this is doing is this is going to elevate our heart rate. You want to do this for about a minute or so. Try to land lightly, try to be light and airy, be gentle on your joints. You don't want to stomp up and down like this, you want to land lightly. And as you do this, you want to change your footing. So sometimes start with the opposite foot. And that way it makes you think a little bit to help your coordination. Most of the time we start all our movements with one side. So if you start with the opposite side, it makes you think a little bit. So this exercise is great to get that heart warmed up, get that blood flowing. You can do a little bit higher impact, add some air, go faster, get those muscles to work a little bit faster, help you swing faster, or stay low impact. The next exercise I want to show you is a step, but this time we're going to do it on the side slope. So you're going to go up and over and across. So what this is doing right here, again, it's getting a heart rate going. You can stay low impact like this, or you can add a little bit hop to it. Just be gentle on your joints, land lightly. And this movement right here is more lateral, and we don't really do this side to side motion during the day. So our muscles sometimes are tighter in this angle. So you wanna do these exercises because this side to side motion is important in the golf swing. We need to shift our weight, so you need to have a little lateral motion. Also, it's helping us change direction, and we do that in the golf swing, getting the heart rate going. This is a great exercise to learn how to separate your upper from lower body. In the golf swing, ideally, you wanna turn your upper body over the resistance of your lower body to get that spring, to get your back turned to the target, to get your weight wound up. Where people go wrong is that they don't have that separation and everything lifts and turns together, or they don't have any turn and they just do this sliding action like this. There's no separation. So this exercise will help you learn that separation. So hold the club like this. Now you can do this with a medicine ball to make it more challenging or some hand weights. But we're simply going to do a lunge and then twist our upper body over the resistance of the lower body. Push back and then we're going to alternate sides. So I'm a right-handed golfer, so when I step on my right side and twist like this, this would be my backswing. And then if I were a left-handed golfer, I would step with my left and twist this direction. This would be my left-handed backswing. So in golf, you want to try to be equal. So it's good to practice this twisting motion in both directions. Good. So you're trying to land lightly. You're trying to get down low and twist that upper body over the resistance of the lower body. Great. If you go to, to cardiogolf.com, 
I have a lot of different variations of this lunge with twist that you can learn and it'll help you with that separation in your golf swing. Another good separation exercise would be to actually stabilize your upper body and then turn your lower body separately from the upper body. So this is a great exercise. It will also help you with upper body strength, help your core learn that separation. So I'm just gonna move this over a little bit so you can see me. What I'm doing is I'm squatting down and I'm trying to stabilize my shoulders and my arms. So my hands are under my shoulders. My arms aren't locked out, but they're firm. From here, you're going to twist, keep your upper body steady, and then come back over and twist to the other side. So this is the opposite of what we were just doing. Now we're turning our lower body separately from the upper body. So you're trying to stabilize that chest and back, shoulders, arms are straight and strong, but they're not locked out, and you're twisting from the waist. Good. So another separation exercise. What I really love this slope for is to practice those uphill and downhill lies. Like I said, driving ranges are usually flat, so we don't have anywhere to practice those. Now you do, and you can do this at home with the shorty club and the slope. So I'm a right-handed golfer, so you can see I'm set up with my front foot higher than my back foot, and I'm gonna try to align myself to the angle of the slope. If you wanna know how to hit an uphill lie, go to cardiogolf.com, type in the search bar uphill lie, and you'll find out how to do it specifically. So now from here, we can practice loading that weight into the backside at the top of the swing. So watch a couple of things here. Watch how my back turns to the target. My weight's loaded into my back side. So my knee is not staying bent as I go back because that wouldn't allow me to turn my upper body. And it's certainly not straightening as I swing back. That would give me a reverse pivot. It's actually doing a little bit of a swivel. So my weight loads into that back side. Where people go wrong in the back swing is that they would do this reverse pivot, some people right here. So I love this slope to help people that tend to reverse pivot because it helps them get loaded into their back side. So only rehearse the back swing on that uphill lie like this. So you just do a few repetitions. You can hold it at the top right there. You can do it smoothly, continuously like this, or you can swing it here and then start over. Swing it here, start over. Great exercise to help you with that uphill lie loading into your backside. From here, you're going to come on over to the downhill lie. Again, go to cardiogolf.com, type in downhill lie, and it'll show you how to hit a downhill lie, specifically the ball position and the swing motion. Now from this downhill lie, we're going to practice the entire swing. So as you swing back, you can see because your, uh, your front foot is lower, I'm right-handed golfer, my front foot is my left foot, I'm not going to be able to load my weight as much. But what I love about this downhill lie is because when you start your downswing, you have to initiate the weight with your lower body and your arms follow. Where people go wrong is that they don't do that lower body and then their hands go from over the top. So feel that weight shift towards the target. Use the slope to help you stay down and through. When you finish, someone says, the spikes on the bottom of your shoe. When you do this action here, try to help the ball up in the air, you can see you wouldn't be able to see my spikes on my weight back. A couple things will happen. I will hit behind it because I bottom out before the ball or I'll swing up on it. So two things can happen. So use this down slope to help you swing towards the target. Follow the slope. Don't fight gravity. So again, you can do this continuously like this. Pick up the pace, go a little bit faster. You can do a little pump to initiate that downswing. You can stop at impact to make sure that club face is square. And then as you follow through, this left leg, this front leg kind of snaps and you push off the ground to finish your swing. You wouldn't want to keep your front knee 
bent the whole time, you won't be able to square the club face, or you don't wanna just use your upper body. You wanna have a little combination, a little shift towards the target, then let that front leg snap and finish. Great.